Last week, after Bernie Sanders dropped out, Joe Biden tried to extend an olive branch to Bernie Sanders supporters via Twitter by telling all of us that he sees us, he hears us, and he knows that he's got to earn your vote. So, in other words, he seemed, you know, like he knew at least that he had to try to unify the party. That lasted about a week, and now here's what he's saying. He is offering anyone this amazing sticker if you uh, choose to send him your hard-earned cash. It says, I'm a Democrat and proud of it. And as you can see, it crosses out socialist and plutocrat because, you know, socialism and plutocracy, these things go hand in hand. I guess <laughs> that's what he's trying to uh, communicate. I don't know. Um, listen, they know exactly what they're doing. They can't feign ignorance. His team knows what they're doing. This is a slap in the face to Bernie Sanders and all of his supporters. So um, that appeal to Bernie supporters lasted about a week. And he's already telling you to go fuck yourself. This is my question. I, I genuinely am asking. I'm not trying to be pretentious um, or patronizing. I genuinely am asking a question to people who are vote blue no matter who. At what point do we start pressuring Joe Biden and the Biden bros to try to make even just a little bit of an effort to win over the left? At what point do we start putting pressure on Biden? Because what I've seen from a lot of people on Twitter, Mehdi Hassan, others, is that if you are even considering not falling in line and supporting Joe Biden, you are a terrible, terrible human being and you must want Donald Trump to win. If you're going to stay home, you're a bad person. If you are going to vote third party, you're a terrible person. So my question to those people who believe that, and I get the legitimate fear about Trump getting reelected, all of the left does. But my question is, at what point do you actually direct your focus to Joe Biden? Does he share any responsibility at all, even a little bit, to try to win over the left? At what point does it become the Democratic Party's responsibility to win over the left? Because everything that I've seen so far has been... That the left should fall in line, and we didn't even get like 10 minutes. As soon as Bernie Sanders dropped out, immediately, we were told to fall in line and lick that fucking boot and like it. So, at what point is that responsibility at all going to be shared with Joe Biden? Like, do they share 50% of the responsibility? Hell, do they share 30%? 10%? Do they have any responsibility to actually win over voters and earn those votes? Any responsibility whatsoever? I'm genuinely asking. I'm genuinely asking. Because time and again, the Democratic Party establishment has given voters the middle finger. They've told us to go fuck ourselves. They said that they don't need us time and again. And all of a sudden, we share all of the responsibility. None of the credit if Joe Biden's elected, all of the blame if he loses, but also in terms of just putting in work, that's on us. It's not on Joe Biden. Do you understand why people are so disillusioned with politics? Because things like this go on. Things like this happen frequently. Joe Biden and the Democratic Party establishment, they have all of the power. So why are you directing your rage to Bernie Sanders supporters, especially when we see things like this, like in a reasonable world, you would see Joe Biden being universally condemned by, you know, neoliberals, Democratic Party loyalists who should theoretically be outraged that something like this is happening. They should be saying, Joe, what are you doing? I support you, but this doesn't help us to win anyone over. But this just gets ignored. And the conversation continues to be, how dare you even consider voting third party? fuck out of here. I've got no time for those types of people who do things like that. And if you genuinely believe that there's like some responsibility that Joe Biden has to earn people's votes, great. I, I respect you more than the others. But this doesn't help foster unity. And to point it out is even blasphemy. Because at this time, in a post-primary election year, we're not supposed to acknowledge anything that's wrong with Joe Biden. We can't acknowledge the fact that a very credible rape allegation just came up against him.
We can't acknowledge the fact that his vote for the Iraq War killed hundreds of thousands of people. We're supposed to shut the fuck up and be quiet because Trump is worse. And if you think that Joe Biden needs to earn your vote, sorry, you're a bad person. You're privileged. Joe Biden doesn't have to do a goddamn thing to win you over, so lick that boot and love it while you're doing it, fucking peasants. Listen, I'll give advice to the vote blue no matter who people or who are just i guess uh making <laughs> vote shaming their main job let me let me just tell you something trying to guilt shame and bully people into supporting joe biden is going to be a less effective strategy than picking up that phone and making calls for joe biden i promise you that because guess what there's going to be a portion of Bernie Sanders' base of support that just won't back Biden. That's a fact of reality, and no amount of, you know, blaming and shaming is going to change that. But what you can change is the group of non-voters who maybe just haven't gotten a call from any Democrat in years. Maybe if you canvassed, or phone banked at least for now, for Joe Biden, maybe you can re-register enough new voters to make up for the lack of Bernie supporters that are willing to switch over and support Joe Biden. That's just something that I think maybe you should do. But instead, that's not fun. That doesn't make you feel as if you have the moral high ground. By telling everyone to, you know, vote for the lesser of two evils, you feel as if, you know, you're genuinely morally superior. Okay, but don't pretend as if you actually care about Joe Biden beating Donald Trump if you're not actually making calls for him. Don't pretend that you actually care about Joe Biden beating Donald Trump if you haven't said a goddamn word about ranked choice voting because over these past, uh, what is it, five years, the left has been screaming about ranked choice voting. Do you want to know what I did when I had a town hall with my representative? I asked her to co-sponsor H.R. 3057, which is the Fair Representation Act, which would move us nationally to ranked choice voting. She told me she would get back to me on this. You want to know what happened? She never got back to me. So after we try to make it so, you know, spoilage isn't an issue, after we try to make the process fair, after we try to fight for our candidate, Shaming us isn't going to convince anyone. What you need to do now is make the case for Joe Biden to people who are non-voters. Because guess what? The real base who you should be going after are people who don't vote anymore. It's not Bernie Sanders' base of support. It is the people who don't turn out. The people who did not come out and support Hillary Clinton in 2016 who just chose to stay home because I think that if a lot of people aren't going to vote for Joe Biden, we should still acknowledge that there is value in them supporting Democrats, you know, on down ticket races like I can still support Jeff Merkley, my senator, who is a Democrat. So what you need to do is everything in your power to make the case for Joe Biden. And I promise you that shaming people who are not going to vote for Joe Biden because they just they can't. That's not going to help. So if you genuinely think Trump is the worst option, I agree with you, right? I think Trump is the worst option. Does that mean I'm going to fall in line and support Joe Biden? It does not. And you can try to convince me. I'll hear you out. I'm a reasonable person. But guess what? At the end of the day, that is a less valuable way to spend your time. Shut up. Make calls for Biden. Period. Otherwise, you know, don't be mad when he loses because he's doing things like this. He's spitting in the face of socialists. I am not a capitalist. I hate capitalism. So, I mean, if you truly want to be serious about unifying the party, then you should be condemning this as loudly as you're condemning all of the Bernie or Busters. But the fact that so many people aren't doing that, it just shows you that this isn't really about defeating Donald Trump to them. This is about getting the left to comply, to be obedient, because that's the thing about our system. Our institutions, they have a way of like forcing people. It, it kind of comes down on you. So people feel like they will be rewarded for, you know, being ostensibly morally superior by vote shaming people who choose not to support Joe Biden, who has been incredibly accused of rape. I mean, if you genuinely 
feel that it's worthwhile to get out and support Joe Biden, then uh, don't make that case to people who already have their minds made up. Like, it's just divisive. You're not going to change anyone's minds, especially with the things that we've seen happen. And, you know, if you're going to continue to vote shame people who are burning your bust, then at least condemn this. At least be somewhat consistent and acknowledge that a share of the responsibility of defeating Donald Trump lies with Joe Biden. But we can't even get that from people, you know? So, um, all right, then, whatever. It is what it is, but we're not going to take you seriously if you continue to vote shame, but not call out things like this.